In this chapter, we will be exploring the wrath of the gods. This means the power that they hold over man or humans. In mythology, many myths show the power that these gods and goddesses possess. They are seen as beings that look like humans but have superhuman powers. What makes these divine beings different from others is that they have very humanistic personalities. This means that there is more than one occasion that these gods have shown a sense of pettiness. In reality, during the ancient times, these Greeks acknowledged the gods in their Greek religion with a sense of respect, yet they are not compelled to love these beings. They have accepted the powers of the gods, but they do not feel compassion towards them. Now here's what you have to expect when we're talking about this chapter. We will be exploring some myths that show what these gods are capable of doing and the wraths that the humans have experienced from these gods. We will be encountering three different myths, and those are Prometheus and Earth's first inhabitants, Dionysus or Bacchus and his followers, and Demeter and Persephone. This chapter aims to give a deeper understanding on how the Greeks see their deities. It shows the relation between these gods and goddesses with the humans, more specifically the Greeks. And lastly, it gives the readers or the students a glimpse of these humanistic sides of the gods and goddesses. So let's start off with our first myth, and that is Prometheus and Earth's first inhabitants. This is a myth about the creation of man. This myth took place after the battle between the Titans and the Olympians. The Greeks believed that it was Prometheus who greatly helped their development, but he soon suffered the wrath of the gods due to such an act. The key figures of the myth are Prometheus, or the one who thinks forward, Epimetheus, the one who thinks afterwards, Zeus, the leader of the gods, Athena, the goddess of wisdom and crafts, and Demeter, the goddess of agriculture. After the war, the world was at peace. However, it was still uninhibited, so Zeus decided it was time to populate the world, but in the middle of his work, he was interrupted with some issues in Olympus, so he appointed Prometheus and Epimetheus to create the first inhabitants of Earth. Now between the two brothers, Prometheus was a sensible one, mainly because of his ability to see what is ahead, to see the future. Epimetheus, on the other hand, can see what was afterwards, or what's in the past, or what is the past. Now this issue will actually build a problem between the two brothers. Because there were a lot of things that are left to be done, the brothers divided the tasks between each other. Prometheus, who was a talented sculptor, created these creatures and beings, while Epimetheus added the details. One day, when Prometheus went to Athena for advice on how to give life to their creations, Epimetheus continued giving details to other animals, such as teeth, claws, fur, and horns. When Prometheus arrived, he realized that Epimetheus gave the other creatures special abilities and details, but forgot about the humans, and the humans were left bare and defenseless. Prometheus did all he can to right his brother's mistake, but soon realized he was out of ideas. This led him to make the humans appear more like the gods. They can stand upright, raise their heads, and are capable of thinking and speaking. At first, the gods approved of this. But this was not enough, as the humans were still defenseless against the other creatures. Prometheus decided to live with the humans to teach them survival skills. Some of the gods were willing to help, Demeter especially. She taught them about edible plants so they have better access to food. The other gods, however, started to worry that these humans were becoming too powerful. Although Demeter has helped the humans by giving them edible plants, Prometheus could see they needed meat, so he hatched up a plan. He cut up an ox as if for sacrifice for the gods. He divided the meat into two piles. One, the bones of the ox, was covered in fat and made it look appealing. 
The other one was lean meat and other edible parts, but he covered them in entrails that looked disgusting. After dividing the pile, Prometheus made Zeus choose which pile he wants as a sacrifice, or sacrificial offering for the gods, while the rejected pile will be given for the humans. So between the two, obviously Zeus picked a more appealing pile. From then on, people offered the fat and bones to the gods and kept the savory meat for them. Zeus knew he was tricked, but decided to save his revenge for later. Somehow, the gods, with their pride, will never admit that they made a mistake. Don't forget that Zeus was saving his revenge for Prometheus, so he was really just waiting for him to make another mistake. Unfortunately, this was not the only betrayal that Prometheus did. He noticed that the humans did not have any physical attributes that can help them survive the cold, and even if they had meat, they cannot cook it. So Prometheus stole fire from Mount Olympus and gave them to the humans. He taught them how to cook and keep the fire burning. He didn't stop there, and he taught the humans how to forge weapons and other things that just like what Hephaestus was doing. The humans became more powerful, and this concerned Zeus and the gods. He was furious and decided to punish Prometheus for his sins. Zeus had Prometheus captured and chained to a rock in the Caucasus Mountains. Every day, an enormous eagle would fly from the sky and peck at his liver. And because Prometheus was immortal, his liver would regenerate every night and he would never die but just continue to suffer. This was the wrath that he experienced by Zeus. And this lasted for 30 years until Hercules rescued and freed him. Thus ends our first myth on the wrath of the gods. Please read about Dionysus and his followers, as well as Demeter and Persephone. Now before we end this discussion, I want you to take note that the first myth wants to focus on the fact that the wrath of the gods are not only for the humans or the Greeks. This can also apply to other deities, to other supreme beings. Now these wraths of these powerful beings or these gods may actually cause a lot of conflicts and riot between each other and we will find out more in our discussion and our study of Greek mythology. But until next time, enjoy your day, good luck and God bless you.